Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about Pleurotus or oyster mushrooms. Pleurotus are a genus of mushrooms in which there are many edible species. Uh, the more common one is Pleurotus ostriatus, which could be a couple different species, but as of now, pretty we think that they are one species. Uh, they're fairly weedy mushrooms, so they grow on lots of things. They can grow on straw, they can grow on dead wood. <clears throat> um, they're very easy to cultivate as well. Um, they're actually, um, yeah, they're, they just are generalists in terms of what they eat as long as it's dead wood. They also are known to feast on nematodes. Um, they, if you search uh, nematodes um, and pleurotus online, you can find that they create these little lassos within their uh, mycelia and um, also exude these chemicals that kind of slow down the nematodes. And then when the nematodes come into those lassos, shoop, they tighten up and are able to uh, eat nematodes for nitrogen. And there are lots and lots of nematodes out there and nematodes love to eat mushrooms. So that's a good, fo good food source for them. Um, so the Latin name is Pleurotus. Pleur is Greek for laterally, uh, formed laterally or sideways position. So that refers to the way the stalk is on the side of the mushroom. And then tus means ear. So uh, Pleurotus, lateral stalk, ear. So the mushroom looks kind of like an ear. Uh, the cap is smooth. Um, and then the stalk is off center. And then there are decurrent gills, which run all the way down the stalk. So that means that the gills go from the edge of the cap and run completely down the stalk. Uh, that's a pretty key uh, identification feature with this mushroom. There are uh, various species and varieties that fruit at various times throughout the year. Um, as long as the temperature is above freezing um, and in kind of you're in the April or May on, it seems like April to December, you can often find uh, oyster mushrooms. All of the pleurotus are edible as long as they are certainly pleurotus. So they have that off center stalk, smooth cap, decurrent gills that run all the way down the stalk. And their spore print is white to faintly yellow or lilac. Um, you can often find them growing on top of each other, almost like uh, their shelves off of a tree. And you can see on the cap of a mushroom growing below the mushroom on top of it, they have that uh, white or lilac uh, spore print. They can be very abundant, and uh, we'll get into why this can create an issue for over-exuberant harvesters later. Uh, they're higher in copper and zinc than other cultivated mushrooms, and uh, by dried weight, they can be 20, up to 27% protein. So uh, Robert Rogers, in his book, Fungal Pharmacy, says that they're kind of between like a high-grade vegetable and a low-grade meat in terms of their protein content. Um, they're a food medicine, so I wouldn't use them to treat anything. Um, I can't treat anything. I'm not a doctor, but uh, they don't really have specific um, issues that they would fix, but they're really good. There's some potential that they could help with cholesterol. This might just be because they contain fiber and chitin uh, and then probably um, other issues that are generally associated with mushrooms they can be good for. So it's good food to eat and um, yeah, they're fairly common. They should be out now. I found a couple already. And um, there's an invasive species called golden mushroom, which has a yellow cap. And that is uh, an escape species. It's cultivated uh, in labs, and but the spores have gotten out and gotten all, all over our woods. So I we were finding pounds and pounds and pounds of that last spring in the Hudson River Valley. So if you find a oyster mushroom that has that off center stalk with gills running all the way down it and it's yellow, that's still oyster, that's still pleurotus, an edible species. Um, they have cultivars that are blue and red, but those are more tropical species and you would not find them um, for where most of you are. Um, in high quantities, this mushroom can cause some issues. For me personally, when I was first getting into foraging, I found tons and tons of mushrooms, uh, specifically oyster ones, over Christmas. I ate pounds over the course of only a couple of days and then went out with some friends had a couple of beers and broke out in hives i've never had hives in my life haven't had them before or since but i think something with the um, way oyster mushrooms affected my digestive tract when i ate a full pound and then had um, a few beers it caused an issue so if you find a lot of them proceed with um, you know anything is good in moderation you don't have too much of this and alcohol mixed with mushrooms can sometimes cause issues. I would put this, I'd put oyster mushrooms tentatively on the issue list with oysters, but I've 
only had that experience with one pound of mushrooms at a time. So that is oyster mushroom. Um, pretty easy to ID. Please, if you find this, send pictures along. It's fairly, fairly common, fairly recognizable and delicious. Uh, also makes really good dried mushrooms. We still have a couple of those golden oysters left over from a full year ago and they go really well in soups. So if you do find them, you want to um, dry saute them. So get your skillet nice and hot. And then you can almost just pull the mushrooms apart, like little, you know, one inch to half inch thick strips, throw them on the, ca on the cast iron or the skillet, let them heat up and cook. And then they will start to exude their own juices, their own water as those cell, wall cell walls break. You can cook it in that moisture until it starts to dry up and then throw on a little bit of butter or olive oil or whatever you want. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a key with a lot of mushrooms is to dry saute them first, particularly ones that um, are more on the moist side. So that's oyster mushrooms. Again, any questions, shoot them along. Uh, any pictures of them, send them along and let me know what you find.